All right. Uh, this is going to be my seventh tutorial in my Apple Watch series. And today I'm going to give you a small overview on WWDC and I'm going to make a sample native app on the Apple Watch. All right, so let's get started. So if you guys haven't watched some of the session videos or even the keynote on WWDC, I highly encourage you to watch it. Um, it adds some pretty important stuff on um, programming guides for iOS, watchOS, and Mac OS X. So you guys should check that out. And so at WWDC, uh, they announced uh, iOS 9 and they announced watchOS 2. And with watchOS 2, they announced something called um, building native apps on the Apple Watch. So let, let's show you that. All right, so before, how it used to work with watchOS 1, which is what my other tutorials had, was that um, we had our Apple Watch and we had our iPhone. And our iPhone would run um, our watch, it, watch Kit extension and then send that data over Bluetooth to the Apple Watch and the Apple Watch would basically show the interface and do have the iPhone do all of the logic. But with watchOS 2, um, the Apple Watch can now do the logic locally on the watch itself so um, the data doesn't have to go over Bluetooth, essentially making apps uh, faster. And if you have some serious processing, you can always have the iPhone do that. But now um, we can make native apps. Okay, so that's that's good. And since we can make native apps, we have some access to some special frameworks on the Apple Watch. So if we go back to the developer.apple.com, uh, and we click on resources, we can scroll down to watchOS, um, and if we go to transition guide, and we click on available system technologies, we can see that there are some new things, clock kit, contacts, core data, core foundation, core graphics, so now you can actually animate on the Apple Watch itself instead of using images. Uh, we have MapKit, Mobile Core Services, Watch Connectivity, uh, WatchKit, HealthKit, and um, also the Apple Watch can now make um, uh, HTTP requests, NSURL requests by itself. So um, if you didn't know, the Apple Watch could connect to a Wi-Fi network. So now it should be able to make its own uh, network requests. All right, so now... Um, to get started with um, developing for watchOS 2, you're going to need to download the OSX beta. So if we just go to developer.apple.com and we click on resources and we click on Xcode and you guys hit download, uh, you should see a couple of Xcodes over here. Um, you want to download Xcode 7 beta and that should come with the ability to um, make iOS 9 apps as well as watch kit or watch OS 2 apps. So just download the beta and get everything set up. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to head into our Xcode beta over here and I'm going to create a new Xcode project and you'll see iOS and you'll see watchOS and OS X. Uh, we're going to be dealing with watchOS today because we want to make a native uh, watch OS app that runs on the watch itself. So let's click on watchOS and iOS app with watchkit app. Uh, hit next and I'm just going to call this um, native watch app. And um, I'm going to be doing this in Swift, but uh, I will be uploading the code for both Swift and Objective-C to my GitHub repository, so you can always see that in both languages. And you can uncheck these for now. Um, in the later tutorial, I'm also going to be doing complications, so stay tuned for that. So let's hit next, and uh, let me go to tutorials swift and save it here 
Okay, so we see our WatchKit extension has popped up here. Let me just expand this. So what I'm going to be doing in this app is I'm going to be having the Apple Watch play a video uh, locally. So um, uh, if you didn't know, the Apple Watch now has support to play uh, like an actual video. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So on my desktop, I have a pre-recorded video, and it's just me scrolling up and down in the objects pane in Xcode, and a small frame just for the Apple Watch. So let's go back to Xcode, and let me just minimize this. And what we're going to do is we will drag our video into Xcode. You can, um, you can drag it into the native watch app folder and when you drag it over uh, let's add it to all of our targets so our watch kit app target and our watch kit extension target and let's click finish okay let me just expand this Oops. and let's go to our interface controller and now what we want to do is this is this is similar um we've we're pretty familiar with this or will activate did deactivate and awake with context so that's something we've seen before and that's still going to reside in WatchKit os2 but now what we want to do is we want to go to our objects pane and drag over the movie object the movie player object and um, as usual, let's open up the assistant editor so we can look at both our storyboard and our code at the same time. Control click and drag it over to your code and insert an outlet. And I'm just going to call this my movie player. Oops. Player. Hit enter. And let's go back to this single and now what we want to do is inner will activate we want to um, give this our movie player the path to our video our test.move video so this is pretty easy what we're gonna have to do is we've already made um, a movie a watch kit interface movie object and we just have to call some of the methods on it so first what we want to do is we want to get our URL. So our URL would be the link to this test.move file over here. So I'm just going to type in let URL equal ns bundle dot main bundle dot URL for resource name string with extension string. So, um, the name of the video is test, test, and the extension is .mov, and that should be it. And what we want to do is we want to set this URL for our movie player. So all we have to do is self dot my movie player dot set movie URL and our URL constant. Oh, and okay, and let's try this out. Oh, right, and um, so uh, now they've actually built a simulator for the Apple Watch, which basically is uh, actual watch itself so let me just give you a small overview so over here we see we go back to our whoops What's going on? okay so this is our clock face and of course uh, there are these things like uh, we can do touch pressure for force touch so I can do deep press so that would be just command shift 2 command shift 2 and lets us, yeah, it lets us do our deep press. We can customize that type of stuff and add whatever. I don't know what's going on right now. Let's go back to our app. 
you just hit Command Shift H, it should take you to our home screen. And our app is right here, so let's click on it. Whoops. I see. Shallow press. And let's open the app. It loads pretty fast. If we click play, we should see our video. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Zoom in. And go click play again. It should replay. And the progress bar for the video is up here. So yeah, this is pretty much a native app on the Apple Watch. So even, let's say, our phone is not in range. Like, our Apple Watch is disconnected from Bluetooth. And our phone's at our house and we're outside somewhere. Uh, we can still watch this video because everything over here is happening on the Apple Watch. Whereas previously, uh, we had to rely on a Bluetooth connection to the phone. And then the phone would do all of the logic. But now, uh, with watchOS 2, apps run natively. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, just wanted to give you a small overview on iOS 9 and watchOS 2 and the new simulators that they have. And I, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or even suggestions for future videos, uh, just leave it in the comments section below. Uh, I will be uploading the code both for Objective-C and Swift on my GitHub repository, so look out for that. And um, in some future videos, I'm going to be doing um, stuff with uh, core animation, um, core location, and I'm also going to be talking about uh, complications and how you can have um, some of your app in a watch face. So stay tuned for that, and please subscribe. Thank you.